Hello everyone. So today we are going to be talking about Le Chatelier's principle. So Le Chatelier's principle um, states that when an equilibrium is stressed, it will shift position to counteract that stress in order to reestablish equilibrium. Now, when we say shift, and you'll hear me say that a lot today, so shift left or shift right, really what we're talking about is that the reaction is going to speed up in a certain direction. So either the, the forward reaction will speed up or the backward reaction will speed up. Um, I'll talk more about that later. Now, um, the reason that the equilibrium system does this is that no one likes change, not even equilibrium systems. Okay. So what the equilibrium system is trying to do is it's going to combat that change. It wants to go back to the original conditions. <clears throat> now, when I'm talking about a system here, I'm talking about like the container and the reaction that's happening in the container. So remember, when we're talking about a system, um, ev like all these reactions are happening at the same time. The forward reaction is happening, the backward reaction is happening because these are it's a reversible reaction. And we have some reactant, we have some product, and of course the relative amounts of reactants and products that we have depend on the equilibrium constant K. So you'll hear, again, you'll hear me say this word uh, system a lot today, and really what I'm talking about is just the reaction itself um, that's happening in a certain container. So this is the system. All right. Now, the types of stresses that can be put on the system um, are, number one, adding a substance to increase the molarity or the concentration. We could also remove a substance to decrease the molarity or concentration. Um, we could change the pressure, and we do this by changing the volume of the container. And then we could also change the temperature. So all of these things are going to affect the equilibrium, and then the system's going to be like, ah! and it wants to go back to where it was because it doesn't like change. So let's talk about these one at a time. Um, so when we add a substance, what we're doing is we're increasing the concentration of just one part of the system. So we might be increasing the reactant concentration, one of the reactants, or maybe increasing the concentration of one of the products. Um, so for example, if I have a reaction that looks like this, I have two reactants, A and B, and then they are going to form C, our product. Um, and then my equilibrium constant K would look something like this. Remember, our equilibrium constant K is products over reactants. And this is, these are all concentrations. We multiply them together. Now, if I'm going to add more um, of, say, my reactant A, what I'm doing here, when I add A here, I'm actually increasing the concentration of the denominator. So when I increase the denominator, what happens is that K gets smaller, our equilibrium constant K. Now, the system does not like this. It wants to go back to the original equilibrium constant K. So because the system wants to um, increase K, again, Again, because it wants K to stay the same, what we need to do here is we need to make sure that the reactants decrease and then the product increases because, again, we want to increase K to get it back to where it was. Um, so in order to do that, our forward reaction speeds up again, to decrease the amount of react reactants that are being formed and increase the amount of products that are being formed. Okay. Now what we, the nomenclature that we use here is that the system shifts right. All right. So um, again, forward reaction speeds up. Our system shifts right in order to produce more of our product. Um, another way that I like to do this as I do like a little visual with my hands here. Um, if I am increasing my reactant, right, the system's not in equilibrium anymore. So I'm increasing my reactant. The system wants to get back to where it was. So what I have to do is shift this way in order to increase my product and decrease my reactant to get back to where it was. That's just kind of a visual of what's happening. Um, it's not the best, like, you don't want to take it literally because we know that in equilibrium, it doesn't mean that our concentrations are the same, right? It just means that our concentrations of reactants and products are constant. So don't take that literally. Just It's just a good way to kind of visualize what's happening here. So here's an example. Um, if I have this reaction here, right, and then here's my equilibrium constant K, and say I want to know which substance is going to increase in concentration if I add my iron ions, okay? So I'm adding some iron. Again, when I add that iron, the um, concentration of this reactant is going to increase, 
increase, right? So the system is going to be like, ah, I want to shift this way in order to go back to my equilibrium. So if I add iron, the concentration of my product is going to increase as a result of that. So the system, we say the system shifts right in order for our equilibrium constant K to stay constant. Um, so adding and removing a substance, you'll see in a second, um, I'm gonna talk about removing a substance, but these are the only two uh, you know, conditions in which Le Chatelier's principle um, where our K is staying constant, all right? Um, so the reason that we shift either left or right is to make K the same value that it was before, all right? And that's really important. So um, the only thing, like I said, that's increasing is our um, product here. Now, the generalization here is that the system is going to shift to the side opposite of the substance added. All right. So um, this is something that you can memorize, but I think it's very helpful to really know why the system is shifting left or right. All right. Um, so in this case, the system is shifting right to keep K constant. Again, if you're more of a visual person, you can think, oh, it's shifting right to kind of um, make it equal again in, in your equilibrium. All right, so removing a substance. Um, now, this is kind of the opposite, obviously, of adding a substance. So we're going to be lowering the concentration of something. So um, in this case, we don't actually just like go in there and grab it and remove it. Um, we're really just reacting it with something else to kind of soak it up and like make the concentration lower. So same reaction here. I have A plus B equals C. And then my equilibrium constant K looks like this. Now, if I remove now some A, I'm decreasing my denominator and therefore my K gets bigger, right? Because they're inversely proportional. So denominator decreases, K gets bigger. And again, the system's like, ah, I don't like this. I want K to get smaller again. So in order to do that, I have to increase the denominator and I have to decrease the numerator to make K smaller back to the original value. So in order to do this, I have to create more reactants and you know, make less product. So because of that, we are going to speed up in the opposite direction toward the reactants in order to create more reactants and get that denominator bigger to get K smaller. All right. So we say that the reverse reaction becomes dominant or the reverse reaction speeds up and the system shifts left toward the products. So um, in this case, you can kind of think of it as the system kind of shifting to fill the gap left behind by the removed thing. Um, again, we are decreasing our reactants here. So the system needs to shift this way in order to kind of fill that gap back in, if you like that visual. Um, the generalization here is that the side of the system that has the removed substance is the side that the system shifts toward in order to reestablish the equilibrium. Again, you can memorize that, um, but I think it's more helpful to really understand why the system is shifting left in this case um, to fill in that gap left behind by the removed, you know, reactant in this example that we were just doing. Okay, next thing, um, we're going to talk about changing the pressure. So remember, we do this by changing the volume. And if you remember from gas laws, um, this was Boyle's law, and we know that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. All right. So when volume increases, pressure decreases. Again, I think about like a balloon blowing up. Right. Um, or just really it's not a balloon blowing up because you would be adding more like moles of air into it. But what you're doing here is you are taking this container and you're making it bigger. So when we make that container bigger, we have a greater area for the same number of particles to hit the sides of the container. And so that's why since the area is larger, our pressure is going to decrease. Um, and then, so what's happening here, when our pressure decreases, again, the system is like, I don't like this. I want to re-increase the pressure, all right? It wants to combat that change. So the change that happened here is that the pressure decreased. The system wants to increase the pressure back to where it was, all right? So um, we're going to increase that pressure to reestablish equilibrium by shifting to the side with more moles of gas. And you'll see this in my example that I have on the next slide. Um, more moles of gas, we're going to look at the coefficients here, okay? Because remember, the coefficients tell us how many moles we have of each thing. Um, if I have more moles of gas, you can think about it like more particles of gas. So 
if I have more particles of gas, they're going to hit the sides of the container more, and therefore they're going to increase the pressure. Okay. Um, you can also think about this in terms of like the ideal gas law. So PV equals NRT. If I have more N, more moles, I have more pressure in the same volume. All right. So um, more moles means more pressure. <clears throat> So the system is going to shift to add pressure again because we want to combat this change. We don't like change. We want it to go back to where it originally was. Um, and on the other hand, if we decrease the volume, I'm decreasing the area in which these particles are hitting to make that pressure. So the pressure is going to increase again, inversely proportional, right? Decrease volume, increase pressure. So again, the system does not like this change, so it's going to um, go against it. It wants to decrease the pressure. And so in order to do this, it's going to shift to the side with the lower moles of gas. So the one that has the least number of coefficients, if that makes sense. Again, you'll see on the next slide, it makes more sense. Um, so here we're shifting to the least moles of gas in order to decrease the pressure. So. Here's our example. I have 3A plus 3B reacts to form 4C. So notice how I have a 3 coefficient and a 3 coefficient on the reactant side, and I have a 4 coefficient on the product side. So I have 6 total, mol total moles of gas on the reactant side, and I have 4 total moles of gas on the product side. So my side with more moles is the reactants, okay? So I want to know which way does the system shift when volume is increased? Okay, so this is kind of a step-by-step -step process here in, in my mind when I think about these problems. So I think volume is increased. Okay, what happens to pressure? Well, they're inversely proportional, so pressure decreases, all right? Volume increased, pressure decreased. Now the system's like, ah, I don't like this. I want to increase the pressure. So again, we're going to shift to the side with more moles so that we have more particles hitting the sides of the container and therefore the pressure increases. So we shift to increase pressure, pressure, which is the side with more moles. Now the side with more moles in this case is the reactant side. So I'm shifting toward the reactants, therefore shifting left in order to increase that pressure. All right. And another way to say this is that the backward or the reverse reaction speeds up. We're shifting left. All right. Um, and then on the other hand, if the volumes decreased, then I have to think in my head, okay, what happens to pressure? They're inversely proportional. So volume decreases, pressure increases. The system is like, ah, I don't like this. And so the system wants to decrease the pressure. And so in order to do this, we need to shift to the side with less moles of gas because we have less particles hitting the sides of the container and therefore our pressure will decrease. So we shift to the side with less moles, which in this case is our product side. I only have four moles of gas on the products where I have six moles of gas on the reactants. So I'm going to shift this way to the right in order to decrease my pressure, okay? And again, you could say um, we shift right or the forward reaction speeds up. So that was pressure. Um, now let's talk about our last change when we have a change in temperature. Now this is going to depend on whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic, right? Um, so remember when we have an endothermic reaction, that means that energy is being absorbed and we can write our chemical reaction with energy as a reactant. Okay, so the chemical reaction would look something like this. We have energy plus A plus B equals C. Um, and then if temperature increases, again, the system does not like that change. So the system is like, ah, and it wants to decrease the temperature. So I like to think of this in terms of just, you know, either if, we, if you want to increase the temperature, you go toward the energy, shift toward the energy in order to make more heat. Remember, heat is energy in chemistry. Um, if you want to decrease the temperature, you shift away from the energy in order to make less heat, okay? So again, if our temperature increases, the system wants to do the opposite. The system wants to decrease the temperature back to the original temperature because it doesn't like change, right? So if I want to decrease the temperature, I'm going to shift away from the energy term because I want to make less heat in order for the temperature to come back down. 
So system wants to cool down. We're going to shift away from the heat or energy, which in this case is going to be toward the product here because the energy is in the reactants. So I'm shifting toward the product, which means I'm shifting right and I, I have my forward reaction speeding up. All right. If temperature decreases, on the other hand, then again, the system's like, ah, I don't like this. I want to increase my temperature back to where it was. So I need to shift toward the heat or energy, which in this case is to the left, all right, in order to make more heat to increase that temperature. Um, on the other hand, if we have an exothermic reaction, then I have my energy on the product side because energy is being released. So again, if the temperature increases, then the system is like, ah, I don't like this. I want to decrease my temperature. So in order to decrease the temperature, I'm going to be shifting away from that energy term. And again, my energy is in the products. So I want to shift toward the reactants in order to make less heat or energy. So I'm making less heat. My temperature is going to come down. So I can say that the reverse reaction speeds up. We're shifting to the left. So again, system wants to cool down. We're shifting away from the heat or energy. Now, on the other hand, if we have a decrease in temperature, again, the system does not like that change. So it wants to re-increase that temperature. I want to shift toward the heat or energy term, which in this case is toward the product. So I can say that my forward reaction speeds up. I can say that the system is shifting right. Okay. And that's our change in temperature. So now that we've talked about all the different things that can happen with Le Chatelier's principle and the different applications of it, let's do an example. So I have this um, chemical reaction at the top, all right? And I want to know what direction does equilibrium shift if I add SO2, if I take away some oxygen gas, if I increase the volume, or if I decrease the pressure. So I want you to pause the video right now and I want you to try to do these before I just give you all the answers. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. Now, if I add some of this sulfur dioxide, right, I'm increasing the concentration of the reactants. Again, if you like to think about it with the little hand demonstration, like if you're a very visual person like I am, I'm increasing some of my reactants. Now, I want to go back to equilibrium, so I need to shift in this direction, so to the right, in order to decrease my reactants and increase my product. So I'm going to shift right. Now, if you want to think about it in terms of K, which is really what the explanation is, right? Um, when I add or remove a substance, I'm changing the equilibrium constant K, and the system wants to get back to the original equilibrium constant K. So what's happening here, if I add a reactant, remember, equilibrium constant is products over reactants. So I'm increasing the denominator, which means that my equilibrium constant is decreasing. So I want to increase the equilibrium constant again. So in order to do that, I need to increase the concentration of my products. I need to decrease the concentration of my reactants. Those, so the system is shifting to the right in order to do that. Right? So we say shift right or we say you know the forward reaction speeds up. All right, second one. If I take away some oxygen gas, so I'm removing some of this oxygen gas, so the concentration is going down. Again, if you like the hand demonstration, my concentration of reactant is going down, so I need to shift in this direction in order to fill that back up and get back to equilibrium. So I'm going to shift to the left in order to do that. So I say shift left, or I say, you know, the reverse reaction is speeding up. Um, and again, explaining that in terms of equilibrium constant K, when I reduce the amount of oxygen that I have, I'm reducing the concentration that's in the denominator because the reactants are in the denominator of equilibrium constant K. So if I reduce that denominator, that means that K is increasing, which we want to get it back to the original equilibrium constant. Um, and so in order to do that, I need to reduce that K, right? So I need to reduce the amount of product that's being made because that's on the numerator. And I need to increase the amount of denominator um, on the bottom in order to bring K back down. So I need to um, speed up the reverse reaction or shift left. All right, next, um, if I increase the volume, 
Remember, volume and pressure are inversely proportional. So increase the volume means a decrease in pressure. So I want to get back to the original pressure. I want to increase the pressure again. So I need to shift to the side with more moles of gas. I can see that I have two plus one, so three moles of gas on this side, and I have two moles of gas on this side. So that means I'm going to shift to the left in order to increase my pressure again. And then last but not least, if I decrease the temperature, again, the system does not like change. So the system wants to increase the temperature again. And so I'm going to shift toward the energy term in order to create more heat and increase the temperature. So I'm shifting to the right in order to do that. All right. Um, so I say that my forward reaction is speeding up. All right. So that is Le Chatelier's principle. Um, I hope that it made sense. I know that this stuff is a little bit confusing. So just take your time. Think about it step by step. Remember that the name of the game here is that the system does not like change. And so it's going to combat the change. Good luck. And let me know if you have any questions.